It's a fun event. Had a great time. Time well spent. Very well organized, well oiled machine. I really learned a lot in a very short period of time. All right. Thank you for that uh, amazing intro. First off, how are we doing? We're starting to wake up a little bit? All right, good. Uh, if not, I'm, I'm hoping what uh, we're going through here should, uh, should wake you up a little bit more. But um, first off, you know, th this, this talk really is for you guys. So uh, stop me, ask questions, heckle, happy to dig deeper. Um, so we'll spend a few minutes going through what the life of a professional hacker looks like and a bit of show and tell of what we see out in the field and finally what, uh, what to do about that. So we, we've heard some great talks today um, about different, different methodologies and different uh, tooling and approaches to building security to locking things down, to, to doing implementation. Um, and that's what you know, the rest of Novacoast does pretty much as a whole. Um, my team and I are really the flip side of that. Our job is to, to break things and break in. And, and hopefully, oh, and, and the, the Novacoast attack team, um, you know, our goal really is to, to break in before the bad guy does. So, one of the first things to look at, um, I imagine most if not all of you in the room have been through a pen test or, or something similar. Um, not all pen tests are created equally. So what, uh, what we and, and some of the other high-end groups call a pen test um, are, are very different from what the bulk of the groups out there might call a pen test. Um, and, and really in looking at what a pen test means to you, the two pieces, the two variables to consider are who are you trying to defend against um, and how deep are you, you willing to go. So what, uh, what a lot of groups kind of start with is the surface analysis here and doing some manual testing, um, kind of poking around, finding what's on the surface and what's easy to find. And that's great to do, but that's not really a pen test. Um, as we go kind of a little bit deeper, what, what we call pen test and other groups um, really focus on is simulate a more skilled professional attacker, um, someone who knows what they're doing, who, who has a specific target in mind and a specific outcome. And then kind of the, the far end of that, um, which, you know, once in a while, some, some groups may need to do this. But especially if it's your first pen test, you probably don't want to start way at the bottom here. And that's really you know, high-end, high sophisticated pen testing where you're really trying to model what someone like a, a well-funded adversary or a nation state would do. So just a, a quick history of the pen testing space. Um, I kind of like to group it into three sections. Um, starting over here on the left, Kind of think back to the 90s where the, the goal of, of hackers, um, kind of to, to Michael's point from, from Microfocus before, um, he was talking about they were motivated by getting their name out there and building their street cred and, and getting onto large company servers to say, hey, I planted my flag, I'm here, I'm, I'm awesome. Um, and that's exactly right. You know, the, back in the days of, uh, you know, the 90s when you could send a specially crafted teardrop packet against a Windows machine and, and DOS the whole system with almost no knowledge, um, it almost wasn't fair. And even back then, you know, the, that was kind of before SSL and TLS were taking off. Um, so there was a, a much stronger focus on the network and the traffic and packet analysis. Then we kind of hopped over to wireless. Now that we were taking over the infrastructure and the network, well, wait a second. All these wired ports are now all accessible from, from Wi-Fi. Um, so breaking into things like WEP and WPA1 and breaking the way things were, uh, were, were encrypted and key links and all that good stuff. Um, 
That was really the focus of the 90s. Then move forward to yeah, the 2000s, maybe late 2000s. Um, a lot of those really simple attacks started to be so, so common and, and so easy to break um, that it, it really got commoditized down. And, and that's where we start seeing vulnerability management programs and vulnerability scanners that everyone in the room could go buy off the shelf and go start testing on their own um, to find that low-hanging fruit without necessarily having to be a pen tester. Um, and that also kind of coincided with the cloud where uh, because everything is SaaS now, because you don't have to own all the tooling, it just made the vulnerability management pieces that much easier. And then kind of fast forward to more today where um, I, I like to say that, that pen testing is more evolved and more difficult these days. Um, but the, the fruits of that labor are also ha have a higher impact. Um, and I say that because you know, we don't care about taking over a server anymore. Now with the cloud, I can spin up a server in Amazon for a couple pennies. You know, who, who cares? Um, it's not about the server anymore. It's about the applications. It's about the data. It's about where your users live and the pieces of intellectual property that, that make your organization unique beyond the infrastructure. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, when we see uh, a web app or a mobile app or something that's custom developed, not off the shelf, that's a huge red flag for us and, and we dig into that like, like crazy. Yes and no. So you still want to obviously do the, the easy pieces. And, and you want to protect the applications and the services running on the server. But it's less about um, kind of getting back to, to John's point of, of SecOps and DevOps. And you don't want to put as much value on one particular server and treat it more as throwaway, where you're protecting what's on it, not the actual underlying system. Um, good question. Uh, and then IoT, um, I'll go through a few examples of this, but this is really the, f you know, this is still starting to, to, um, to blow up where you know, you've, got, you've got refrigerators, you've got security cameras, VoIP phones, um, printers, they have a full-blown Linux stack, um, HVAC systems, just all these things that they've got an IP address just like all the other infrastructure. Um, and it's unique because it's the first time we our pen testing is touching the, the tangible physical world. So I, I like to show this slide because I, I almost feel bad for all of you guys. Um, you know, as a defender, you need to be experts in and knowledgeable of and, and locking down every single one of these tools and languages and, and pieces of technology. I, I only need one. You know, I just need an entry point. So it's always a losing battle. So what do we do about all this? You know, in the 17 or 18 years that I've been you know, pen testing professionally at Nova Coast, we've, we've always broken in. And you know, knowing that, knowing that the bad guy will always get in if they're determined enough, like, are we screwed? What do we do? So if I take a step back and look at all the groups we work with um, and look at you know, small groups, large groups, global groups across all industries, across the board, their IR programs um, in a lot of ways are pretty solid. Uh, you know, the, the standards are, are all pretty well defined. The policies and procedures are there. Um, and typically, there's products in place to, to start attacking those, those, those issues. The one piece that's missing universally is measurement and visibility. So if, if you go to any global IR lead and say, how well is your program working and how do you know, they'll, it's deer in headlights. So this is kind of how, how I see the world and how our team likes to advise groups on how to deal with this stuff, 
is start thinking about taking you know, DevOps and unit testing and, and, and the idea of pen testing, but applying that to your security controls. And, and what I mean by that is not to do a pen test. Um, you know, security response testing is not, is not about pen testing and vulnerabilities and saying, here are the holes in the technology and here's how the bad guys can get in. It's about, let, let's just assume they're already in, okay? They're in your systems, they're poking around. Um, how long does it take for us to detect them? Um, how do we respond to that? Um, looking at you know, people, process, and technology, maybe the tools see, see the bad guy in your environment, but uh, there's, no, there's no ticket, there's no alert. Or maybe there is an alert, but, uh, but the SOC is taking three weeks to, to open that alert. Um, so that's what I mean in terms of testing the remediation and looking at that as a metric. So a quick example of this, um, I'm running short on time, but happy to chat about this more uh, the next couple days. So what does that look like for something like DLP? You know, we, we start, let's say up here, where we're basically gonna, you know, let, let, let's look at a, a hospital. Um, We'll take a thousand patient records, drop them in the table, and, and email out that spreadsheet. You know, if you've got DLP and, and your DLP doesn't see this, good luck. Basically start over. Um, you're basically running into a minefield with a target on your back. So, you know, assuming you catch that, um, okay, let's, let's crank it up a bit, make it a little bit harder. Um, something that's, that's a little more difficult to detect as we move down the, the, um, the level of maturity or move up that, that scale. So let's do the same thing now, but uh, zip up that, that same file, uh, which makes it a little harder to, to detect. And okay, you know, if that all looked good, now let's go send it off to Dropbox or somewhere in the cloud that we don't necessarily have control or visibility into. So this one here, you know, if that all looks good on the egress, now start looking internally. You know, if you can move laterally and move data around without detection, um, that's the case in most groups. Um, even the largest of the largest, you know, financials that are at the top of the maturity curve, they struggle with this. So once you get to the point of that all looking good, um, you know, that, again, this is a long, this is a multi-year process, but uh, okay, let's take it and, and <coughs> drop that thousand records down to a hundred, or down to ten, and then down to one. Which realistically, no one's ever going to catch that. No tooling or IR or SOC will have that level of granularity, but that's always the uh, the gold standard. Um, again, this is not a pen test. This is you know the pen test is everything here and to the left. We're looking at, once you're in, what happens afterwards. Um, if you take one thing away from this talk, if, you, if you're not familiar with the MITRE ATT&CK framework, uh, write that down, Google it later. This is a great way to start thinking about these problems. Um, I'm short on time, so I'll skip this, but our goal here really is to build automated metrics and tooling to measure effectiveness of your security program as a whole. And starting in QA, moving that to prod, and then full end-to-end -end testing with, uh, with ticketing and, and a, almost a stopwatch of how long did it take from that initial poke to remediation of the problem. Having you know, your IR program, your people, your tooling, everything. So real quickly, where do you start with that? Um, I'd love to chat more on this to kind of give you detailed guidance, but um, start with your last pen test. You know, what were the findings? Uh, start with that. Did you put technical controls in to deal with that remediation? Go test those. Um, if you had findings but nothing came out of that, then it's maybe not a tooling problem. Maybe you want to start looking at your people and process and how you deal with pen testing and other testing and um, your IR program. Um, but the goal here again is to, to do the testing, that's the easy part, track it, 
do the remediation, um, move on to the, the, the more strategic remediation, uh, map that to something like the MITRE ATT&CK framework where you can track metrics, and then move down that maturity curve and repeat all over again. So that's about it. Thank you guys.